Partakers has been something um, that is uh, extremely uh, beneficial for myself. It, it, it's it's been something that um, you know they they've instilled hope in in myself. Um, just to give you guys a quick uh, you know a little. Um, bit about myself. I was just recently released from prison um, after serving eight years uh, in prison. Um, the last four years of my incarceration, um, I was involved with the Boston University uh, program in Norfolk, MCI Norfolk. Um, and there was this program called Partakers where they offer mentors to basically help you um, with your education. Now with uh, our involvement with Partakers, we had our first prisoner nine years ago. We're on our second. And um, about two months ago, we sat down, our team, and we said, our prisoner will be gone in a year. Let's see if we can get another team up and running, and uh, we can mentor them as they start their first year while we're still involved in partakers. And so uh, our minister gave us five minutes uh, to uh, talk from the altar on Sunday, and uh, we told the partaker story, which is a pretty powerful story. And we're blown away when actually we now have three teams. Seventeen new people came up after the service or subsequently and asked to be part of partaker's teams. For myself, I was, uh, as you s Ariel said, 21 years as a state and federal probation officer. Uh, prior to that, I worked in DSS. I worked in DYS. And I tell people I've spent 25 years in the misery of other people's lives. Um, during that 25 years, uh, my faith grew. And although I knew deep down I was not going to retire as a probation officer, um, I did not um, embrace what God had for me. And eventually, I knew I had to leave because when you work in the criminal justice system, you are part of the system. You're still part of the equation. And so things that happen to the inmates also happen to those who work in correctionals. Part partakers played a great, um, you know, a, a, a large part in, um, you know, instilling hope since I've been released um, for the last two years. I'm still continuing to go to BU. Um, and, and the individuals who were involved in partakers, although they didn't have to, uh, really just went above and beyond the call of duty uh, in regards to just offering support uh, in so many different ways. Um, you know, just being a friend, being an heir, um, you know, to listen, um, you know, giving me all types of advice, um, and just being there for me as friends. Um, so, um, you know, for myself, uh, the partakers program, I, I was explaining to somebody earlier, um, it, it, it kind of felt like after being released um, for a period of time that I was almost drowning. Um, and, I, and, and I felt as if, um, you know, it was because of the partakers program um, that I've been able to keep my head above water. Um, and if I did not have the partakers program, um, I don't think I'd be sitting here in front of you guys today. I don't actually know where I would be. The first question I think we should ask, and I think we should address to Nick, is this. Um, what is something that you wish people on the outside knew about life on the inside? I think just at the end of the day, the individuals that are on the inside are human. You know, it's, it's hard. Uh, and and it, and it takes it takes help it takes support um, for individuals um, to be able to make it through that you know um, family support obviously religion for a lot of individuals to be able to find that peace um, and, and something to help them strive for something better in life um, which is also the case uh, in my situation as well. I never thought I would get to know God the way I've gotten to know God from these men. When these men start sharing and talking about the experiences they've had in their drug, alcohol-ridden, crime-ridden life and have had God intervene in their behalf, when they talk about and talk about the bullet holes that are in the shirt they're wearing but no bullet holes in them. And these type of experiences happen to them all the time. And when you get to get close to them, they turn around they say to you, I know God is trying to introduce himself to me. I just don't know how to answer him. And I asked myself in preparing for this, 
What does this say to us? What does this say to me as a, a partaker's uh, person? And what I was thinking is that as people, it's Unitarians, and as people of every religion and every non-religion that care about other people, that care about helping people. It's something innate in so many of us. And, uh, but a lot of people, I think, have a concern that how do I get involved in doing something and in giving to somebody else? That very often you can get really tied into a charity and they keep asking for more and you feel guilty and they, they want more of your time and you don't know if you can give it. Where this has been a very easy environment for us to structure the time that we give and know going in what it's going to take. If you want to be involved with prison ministry, I think you should at least one time go inside and hear that door slam. And when you hear that door slam, it just gives you just a brief idea of how, you, how someone would feel knowing the next time they go out that door will be years from now. And until you get into it, you don't realize how tough it is. And uh, then uh, as they plan to get out, uh, I, they all have this image, I think absolutely true, what's going to happen. And there is, even though there is pre-release and things like that, I think everybody's expecting it's going to be a different world, a, a tough time for them. And, uh, and they're, they're kind of afraid. I was talking with somebody earlier about my, my experience in trying to get out and, you know, being labeled and, and, and trying to get a job and things like that. Um, I actually got hired by accident, I believe. Um, <laughs> and then my Corey came back three weeks later. Um, so at that time, uh, you know, I had already, you know, gained a little favor in my boss's eyes and, 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 and things like that. Um, and basically, I got sat down with, like, the people in uh, HR, Human Resources, and they said, well, we're going to get back to you by Friday, but chances are we're going to be letting you go. Um, so I ended up writing an email myself. I have a great support team, um, you know, some uh, being, one being a judge, you know, college professors, uh, psychologists um, that are part of this Partaker program. They all then wrote emails uh, and made phone calls in my behalf. Um, and, and, you know, it was a process. They ended up calling me back in the office not too long after that, um, you know, saying, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we just have two questions. We haven't made our decision yet. And they were like, well, how long did you do? And I said, well, eight years. And they said, how long have you been out? I said, three months. <laughs> and, uh, and, and they were like, okay, well, we'll get back to you. And uh, so, I mean, that, I guess I thought, I was like, oh, that's a good thing. They didn't fire me yet. Um, but um, at the end of the day, um, you know, they, they, they ended up calling me back in a couple of weeks later saying, listen, we've made our decision and we've decided to continue on with your employment. Um, shortly, maybe two months after that, I received like, a, prom a major promotion to myself. Nicholas is going to have an effect on hundreds of people. How old are you? Thousands of people. <laughs> thousands, and I kid you not, thousands. Because everyone that Nicholas affects becomes a Nicholas, affects three more. One of the things I share with the guys in lockup, I go, you want to know how high a building's going to be built? Watch how low they dig the basement. And so I asked them, how low have you been dug? And they can all answer that question. 